recently they've just started being it they've they've stopped being able to win in north america yeah. so obviously every team would like to just do the fanatic thing and just win every game with yeah. different styles even if you lose two members in the first one minute of the game yeah crazy stuff but you're right it always seemed like tsm had a fail safe for their games where they just buckle down a simple strat of you know go back to a split push and then they tear the team apart yeah. after oh. they seemed like it was getting serious but things have gotten out of hand in the tsm camp in that four yeah. game losing streak and as was mentioned before if it becomes five will be their longest losing streak in the their history in the north american lcs that dates all the way back to 2013. yeah so six splits so on the other side of the coin as well, Dignitas just taking down Gravity yesterday, a very big win for them mm -hmm. in momentum and mentality. Like Kobe said, Gamsu feeling like he's back or looking like he's back, I should say, in his most recent play. So a lot of big things. Pentakill for Shifter as well. These guys are in very high spirits here to enter day two of week eight. Yeah, picks and bans in particular. More Fizz bans we've been seeing. Yeah. Uh, this time we do get the double 80 carry ban. So that pushes the 80 carries onto their secondary picks. Maybe we end up seeing Corky or Jinx out of Wild Turtle at some point. And back to standard stuff for TSM. Yep. I guess back to is an overstatement. They've been playing standard stuff <laughs> for quite a while now. Let's see what they put into the mix for this one. Dignitas feeling like the Rek'Sai. Pressure from Helios is going to be very big in the early part of the game. The next few pickups. Shifter looks like he's picking for somebody else. He's yawning. He'll get the counter pick. Gamsu Rumble top lane, trying to use the new AP items to his advantage. We have seen a few Rumble plays as well. Balls was able to bring one out yesterday. And a few other ones. Saw Seraf try his hand at it, unfortunately, with a loss. This time, we get actually Kiwi Kid picking up Thresh and yeah. Helios, Helios <laughs> picking up the Rumble for Gamsu. I actually heard when I was going to do an interview yesterday, Broken Shard walked up to Kiwi Kid and he said, I want you to do that every game. The way you controlled the game on Thresh is what I want you to produce every game for the team. So see if he is involved in quite a bit of roaming around the map for Kiwi Kid. Yeah, that could be expected. You need to have a strong roaming presence as a support against TSM to mm -hmm. match the mobility of Lust Boy. Although Lust Boy's effectiveness has been diminished in the last few games during the loop. That's true. Not much has been working for TSM. He's been trying that Shen, not working out for but him. But as you're preparing for TSM, you have to prepare for the TSM that has been winning because you need to expect that level of play mm -hmm. if you want to be able to beat it. Interesting Trist pick for a Wild Turtle. That will be... In CLG Week 5, Tristano was played for TSM. His so only Wild Turtle. one play. Yep. <clears throat> that was Wild Turtle. That was not a Keith game. Keith has just played the one game. Yeah, and it, Turtle has still kind of shown a few flaws, still has had good plays as well, not really tilting towards either way too heavily, but definitely something they need to lock down. And instances in the late game is where his flaws do start to show more in the tight plays. Now to the side of Team Dignitas. The Jinx does get locked in. The Victor is gonna be locked in for Shifter, and that will be what they decide as their team. Good amount of AP with nice Jinx AD on the side. Yeah, I really wonder now what TSM will pick against this Victor. Victor is one of those champions that is pretty safe to pick early. Not mm -hmm. too many counter matchups. Twisted Obviously, Fate been Twisted in there recently. Fate yesterday for Bjergsen. Ooh. Not too much success. Let's see, what does. TSM has tank top lane, tank jungler. They need a pretty hefty damage dealer from the mid lane. And Team Dignitas doesn't have the strongest tank line. Wow. Ooh, back to the old AP Kogma. Full retro. This is interesting, actually. Uh, typically, Bjergsen has consistently won his lane in CS, whereas Shifter mm -hmm. has consistently lost his lane in CS. Yesterday was much different. Shifter had a huge lead. Uh, but this would normally be a very uh, tilted matchup towards the victor as far as who was able to get more farm. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if Shifter, because of the normal expected discrepancies when you're faced with an unfavorable matchup, whether or not Shifter can actually uh, trump Bjergsen in lane here and push C TSM into even more of a late game style, which is something that has kind of been their Achilles heel. It feels like in most of TSM's games, they wait until late game to try and do something, and then sometimes the car won't start, and they end up losing the match. <laughs> Just 
just can't seem to get the victory in there. Broken Shard about to leave the team. His last few words. Loco Doko will be giving his few over as well. Interesting to see what these teams have. Nine and six as we enter into this game. They try to break away from each other in the standings. And be sure to send hashtag DIG win or hashtag TSM win at LOL Esports. And obviously we'll be seeing how you are calling this game in just a bit. Make sure you keep your eyes on the bottom of that screen for your fan vote to show up and your poll to be counted. As we head into this game, you have to consider TSM's kind of on a slump here. Dignitas really coming off a great win over Gravity, and this would be a perfect time to bite down on one of the top teams in North America and take another chunk out of that. Yeah, especially because it almost felt like for Team Dignitas when they were on that losing streak and they had a week with Gravity and TSM mm -hmm. coming up, many people were writing them off as, off as just being a sixth place team. Uh, but now, yeah. if Team Dignitas wins this, it puts them at 10 wins, still even in contention for a top seed, and it would actually push TSM down into that sixth seed. TSM is actually the only team in the top six who hasn't clinched their playoff berth yet. Technically speaking, if TSM lost out and teammate won out, TSM would place seventh. Yeah, crazy stuff to think about. Still a lot of things that can happen here in the standings at the end of the split. We'll see how this one starts off. Remembering the last game these guys played was quite a bit ago. Eriksson was on Echo in the mid lane, so a lot of changes have happened here. Styles. Yeah. We've been seeing so much lane swapping in North America as well. It is really one of the skills that is most tested by each other's teams, rather than straight up 2v2 laning is just how well can you team play the early game? This time they put out pretty obvious early lane swap wards to try and track where the top laners, junglers, AD carries are moving towards the map. Gamsu was spotted by the deep ward from TSM, but Lustboy and Wild Turtle were also spotted out by the river ward. So a lot of information changing hands here. So ready for the lane swap they are that they actually sweep. That's that's actually a pretty, it would be a pretty sweet move if Lust Boy and Turtle weren't walking on top of this ward, then it would be a total guess game for Team Dignitas. But because that ward was unexpected, huh. they see Lust Boy. Back so they wrong. know they're in the right swap here, as they saw Lust Boy run down. Not a problem for them. Nicely done. Even with that early sweeper start coming in from Santorin. We'll watch how this one plays out. We've seen Rumbles now starting off with that ability to home a little bit more and help huh? See that power to Gamsu in the top lane. Help get through the jungle as well a little bit quicker. Not too much of an advantage though. Just matched up the other way. No, that's right. I said Echo the last time. And Bjergsen is now on the Kog'Maw. That's what Shifter played in their first matchup. So Shifter knows exactly what he's getting himself up against here in the mid lane. Yeah, Ooh. early level two for Shifter. Nice. Nicely played. He needs to be able to take these aggressive windows and punish while he has the edge in this lane against the AP Kog'Maw. Uh, also, with Lost Boy being shown in lane, it's one fewer person that could gank, but in lane swap scenarios, the mid laners actually have to be very cautious. Uh, until they show for a turret push, the mid lane gank would be the obvious play, which is why Shifter is cheating his strong side of the map right now, knowing where the jungle starts most likely were, and that would mean also where Maokai and Santorin would be coming from. Staying as far away from as possible. Yep, now they know the jungle pressure should also be fanning out to the sides. And get these outer turrets dropped down, so. No, with that ward down, we may see a bit more aggression. Cole Belter, he's still falling behind in CS with his want to go a little aggro in this lane. Like Jinx yeah. top lane will have a bit of an advantage here, obviously coming out. Well, no, actually Tristana in their side, not a Sivir, so. Yeah. Be what pretty I, equal. What I find fascinating, uh, but pretty smart actually, is Tristana uh, is, we call her the demolitionist internally here, uh, for who can kill turrets. Yeah. Uh, Zyrene came up with that, by the way. It's his <laughs> term. It's very clever. Uh, but anyway, it's because of the explosive charge and how quickly you can take down turrets. But early on in the game, when you're doing these 4v0 lane swaps, it's not so much about how quickly you can take down the turret, it's about the bounce and the freeze afterwards. So early on Perfect. in the game, the Trist never skills explosive charge because you actually don't want to shut the lane and you want to be able to freeze afterwards. As we saw there, Wild Turtle started 1.Q, 1.W. If I was Emperor or another person, we've actually seen this, just the Q take down the turret as well in the early part of the game when they were still there very, very early. 
Here it happens, just about that four minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Got him. Took him down. All right, so Gamsu's feeling good about his lane. Everything went pretty even there, but that's also what we saw in last game. It just keeps going even. One team breaks apart. You gotta be very careful after that. You start to get a deficit there, because it can be very hard to come back. A quick sight stone rush by Helios. Helios instantly Whoa. into a yeah. pink ward as well from Gamsu in the top lane. Shifter missing a few free CS. Yeah. Unfortunate, especially because Bjergsen has gone back and picked up a very early tier. It's a domino effect. You miss one and you just oh. pass up the rest of them. Bjergsen has the cannon. Look away. <laughs> no! So many. It gets hard once Kog'Maw's up to the turret very early. That was a good prep yeah. on that. He'll miss this. Yep. He should get the rest here pretty easy. So, 31 to 30 in that. They leave the lane pretty even. Tier already stacking on Bjergsen's side, so he's more than happy to just keep casting out spells and keep his lane farmed up. Two vision wards for him. They're making sure if they need to get in a position for vision, well, they, they have the ability. Well, they are prepped here. Yeah. They had no Big turret either. an advance flash. Yeah, very, very far up for this engagement. Dignitas getting a bit of what they want. Maybe. Uh, turtle? I mean, Jinx already went down. I thought they were going to come up with a kill for themselves, but Lust Boy gets the Storm Shield on, and now nothing that Dignitas wants. They're going to have to move out of that. Good summoner heals and spells used across the board from TSM to keep themselves safe in that engage. Yeah, I mean, it was a very nice, smart, timely gank by TSM. They recognized that the swap uh, was not necessarily... Basically, they knew that Team Dignitas would swap down to the bottom side, and instead of reswapping, they just send four people since there was no turret there, and they end up executing a gank. Uh, I think they could have actually gotten a second kill very easily. Turtle jumped away really preemptively after the first kill. Kind of strange. It, the bait at the beginning, they're like, ah, it's Turtle being Turtle, aggressive rocket jump, but it yeah. was actually a bait for the, inten the intended fight. Then after they pick up the first kill, we're going to end up seeing it here so I can explain it in real time. He gets the slow encore JJ, then everyone else comes out to support him. And yeah, Turtle is getting a little bit jumped on. He's scared of Gamsu, but then that rocket jump away. Dude, the fight's still happening. Look how low Team Dignitas is getting. One or two shots from yeah, Chris there. Another bill. Easy two kills. Uh, but So it's good that he's taking the, the teachings into consideration, but well, maybe too much. Yeah, he jumps <laughs> in only when you have backup and yeah. He still I, uh, has flash. He's good to go. Personal rant, I hate the just don't flash in ever as a yeah. training strategy because there are situations when you need to flash in. Yeah. And it obviously TSM knows the way they want to run their ship, but I, I just don't agree with that teaching style. It feels like Wild Turtle is in his own head sometimes. It's different. That's what that play looked like. He wanted to stay completely safe and the team surely had an upper hand. See if they can increase that as well and snowball it. That was Santorin coming down so he can use that kill pressure now around the map as he gets a bit bigger. And they do give an assist actually to Dyrus in that situation. So that's nice for the top laner. Santorin now using a bit of that aggression to get himself in the face. Not even in the face, I'm just saying in the jungle. Helios is to the top side getting some scuttle crab. So denied on the red buff there as well. Got him. Okay. Yep. Seek and pray. Needs to get those deep wards down to try and take advantage of the early. Wait, he didn't have. He doesn't have sidestone. He did. He thought about sidestone. He must have he swapped it out. Away? Yeah, I think he probably swapped it out in base. It was an interesting buy. Yeah, I. I'm just gonna double, yeah, double check. Zooming back. Double Keep check. control of the game in the bot lane here. The one kill so far for Team Solo mid, not getting them into too crazy of a position. They know they can slowly work this lead here. Very he, smart play. He changed his mind while he was at base. Ah, uh, quick change. He had sights, don't pink ward, and then boop, right back to bombing center. Okay. That was an interesting buy. No wonder. So Dragon now over to TSM with all the pieces falling into place here from just that bottom engagement. They have full control over ward coverage. The bottom side of the map on uh, Dignitas' side is completely lit up. No chance for them to come back into this. And earlier Dragons than usual that we're seeing in this game. Yeah, if TSM can maintain control or even build the lead while they have uh, the Kog'Ma Maokai scaling up in the laning phase, it will be to their advantage. Although, Wild Turtle down about 15 CS to core JJ. Miraculous that Bjergsen is up CS yeah. uh, against Shifter's Victor. That is... Very true. You're just getting lasered into the turret. Yeah. That is about the normal lead and deficit that we see from these two mid laners, but definitely not normal for this champion yeah. matchup. 
you hit that six, you can just void ooze, throw an ultimate out, and you're pretty much clearing the waves. Yeah. Not too bad. Still trying to actually tag in damage with some of these attacks we've been seeing in the lane. Uh, easy clear, Shifter has no worry once he gets back to lane. However, still falling behind on a bit of CS. Yeah, two waves behind, basically. 12 CS. Okay, so Bjergsen putting out a pink ward, getting himself safe. A few pings towards the top side, says, no, there's nothing that we can have here. As Core JJ takes the bottom. He's up 20 CS on Wild Turtle right now, but Wild Turtle still has that assist. He's gonna be cleaning up CS in the top lane here, so he should actually get himself a pretty nice wave. Uh-oh. Lust Boy's not level six for the extra peel either. Oh, that's... They're gonna go for Lust Boy since he can't rocket jump away. Turtle tries to put himself a little bit goal side here, but he can't really dodge this damage. Helios goes in as Gamsu turns around fully for that as he was overheated. They miss yeah. out. I don't think they really had the opportunity with the disengage. That was actually a very well avoided gank by TSM yeah. after the initial face check. Uh, <laughs> being able to... Look before you leap on that. Yep. Should be okay. Wild Turtle jumping away perfectly with his rocket jump. Not to be interrupted by the Rek'Sai on Burrow. Yeah. Nice poke. I was like, what was that? Helios Prey Seeker off on the side. A little... Back and forth between him and Santorin as they go for a scuttle. You see how much pressure Shifter still puts on Bjergsen here in the mid lane. Definitely allowing Dig to get their lanes pushed up here. See if they can start to use any of these wards. They're inching closer and closer into TSM's jungle. Gamsu, careful. It could be a bait, but you don't want to be the one that dies as well. I think he plays it very smart. Starts to back off a little bit. Hopefully Helios doesn't bait him into too much. There was a ping on the turret. They throw it on the equalizer. Careful with that explosive charge. And you actually save it. Nicely done. Bit of damage on the turret. Probably means TSM will stay for that last take. Yeah, it's a little bit risky to stay that long because you're giving time for Team Vignatos to rotate around uh -huh. and right. make it there. But yeah, everybody's uh, in vision. But because TSM has Dyrus in the bottom lane with the teleport up, they have backup if they do get collapsed wrong. Even so, they're deciding against it. Yeah. Yeah, we lost power. One wave is fine, and we're back here. Let's see what he's working with. Just about 900 and some gold. That'd be a critical cloak there. Coming for Wild Turtle. Slow game after the first gank in the early part. Teams are definitely wary about getting themselves caught in anything. TSM was able to get that free dragon and happy with just kind of working very slow. Uh, not even lead. The kill lead and a bit of the map pressure in their favor. But yeah, because because TSM was unable to finish that second turret, that's a brief gold lead for Team Dignitas. Yeah. It's weird. It's like this stall. Turtle has to go back to the top, push the lane twice now. And the Gamsu actually may be there in time. Really, though, a lot of this will be about when Kogma completes Luden's Echo. AP Kogma was actually helped slight. Whoa! Double flash. Would have been sick. I liked it. Yeah, nice try. Like we can now they at least have the flash down from Kogma if they try and pull off an aggressive play again. Uh, anyway, the AP itemization changes do help AP Kogma this patch. Uh, he doesn't benefit much from straight AP, so the AP drop on Luton's Echo actually helps him more because it's a cheaper item with more move speed now, uh, which is incredibly yeah. important on Kogma. Additionally, the item you want to build afterwards, whether that be Haunted Guys and Leandries, are more efficient on top of that. Plus, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, the AoE slow from an ultimate being 40%, allows you to chain Kogma ultimates late game when he does hit max build. So actually a lot of little small buffs for AP Kogma that make him more efficient and more effective. It's quite painful as well once he starts tagging you with more. 282 out of 750 on the tier right now, so not too shabby. Pretty good clip. He's only 13 minutes in to the game. But that Ludens has been finished. So we see him having a bit easier time clearing these waves as well. Wild Turtle patching up the bot wave right now. He's approaching up to 15 minutes in the game. Just one more and we'll get that dragon back on the map. Lust Boy is already setting up control for that for the team right now. Yep. TSM, usually a team that lets us go to the wayside, but they've been setting things up, or okay with letting them go to the wayside, but they've been setting things up just to grab them nice and easy. TSM trying to go back to basics, yeah. late game team fighting compositions where they can rely on some of their skill to go even or ahead in the laning phase right. and then have superior scaling, which is kind of what could be the case in this one. 142 CS on Bjergsen, only 14 minutes in. Luden's completed, already one dragon in the bag. 
and now forcing Team Dignitas in if they want to prevent the five dragon stack. Great movement by Lust Boy there. You see him kind of jut down and then come up along the wall to keep himself safe. Everything he's doing, making sure he can stay alive in the situation. He'll have the clear on this sweeper up actually for Lust Boy. If he puts it in deep enough, the pink ward is going to give him the vision they need and a clear on the top side of the entry. Yeah. The question will be whether we see a Rumble teleport in and if TSM respects yes, it. Yes, we will. Yeah, they back away because they do not want to get caught in the Rumble ultimate. Ghost is actually burned by Bjergsen, which is interesting. They've abandoned the drag. Now they're zoned up by the gravity field. And then Chomp, oh man, what a setup of defense. You can't even walk through that. Bjergsen, imagine if the team was able to follow that fast on the Void Ooze. Being a persistent slow there would have absolutely helped the re-engage for TSM. But Dragon goes over to Dig, nicely played to split TSM up there and keep them choked into their jungle. Yeah, I would say just a poor movement all grouping up behind there when they could have zoned to one side since Team Dignitas came in from multiple flanks. TSM could have just stayed grouped and moved to one side, not had to give up Dragon Control. Right. But now, Dictate that uh, yourself. they do kind of give up the Dragon for not much. Just the teleport of Gansu for a basically gifted Dragon as TSM allowed themselves to be zoned out by Gravity Field. And now they're trying to make yeah. a rotation, but still no turret, maybe a boost. You can see feeling pressured after that. They want to try and get go. something else. They can't go away empty-handed on that play. Unfortunately, that is not the Dragon, but they're only tied up 1-1 one, one now. Very close on the gold as well. See if that's even just someone's lane themselves. Oh, the lanes are actually pretty closely matched up. Yeah, there's a... So it's a little bit here and there. There's a 250 gold differential between Gamsu and Dyrus. There's a 900 gold differential uh, with Bjergsen and Shifter. That's where it's coming from. And mostly. then, yep. but 150 on Lust Boy because of that one assist. But really, aside from that, not much doing. Mm -hmm. So just keeping it safe. You can see all that cash on Wild Turtle right now as well. Probably wouldn't want to get into too big of a fight without him being able to spend that. Ooh. Right now in the mid lane, taking a big, big chunk. He'll be finishing that Infinity Edge quite soon. Core JJ with that Avarice, trying to get himself some extra gold during the laning phase and build himself up. Victor is such a threatening champion after his second upgrade on his hex core because he gets the move speed from his Q, which gives him the closing distance for his laser, which has also been upgraded, so it does some of the best base damage of any basic ability in the game. Mm -hmm. And he can just repeat that combo again and again. Huge amounts of lane pressure and threat. Definitely gave a bit of trouble to Bjergsen in the mid lane for damage to his champion, but Bjergsen's focus was still on that CS the entire time. Nice lead by him there, 40 CS to his Kog'Maw. Hasn't really been going into the jungle either to scrape up those minions from Santorin. All for himself. Finally got that Infinity Edge onto Turtle here. We'll see what TSM can start to break out and do. See the Aegis being built up onto Santorin. I think that's one on the Kiwi Kid, I'm guessing. It's just a little Ruby Crystal. Yeah, interesting. I feel like Helios is going that Helios, direction yeah. as well. Helios, yeah, right. Yeah, could it be Face the Mountain early for Kiwi mm -hmm. Kid at some point? But yeah, I mean, it's it's a very TSM-style game. They don't tend to blow people out, uh, but that's been part of their downfall this split, is in these closer games, they're making team play mistakes that are then punished and lead to defeat. And for Team Dignitas, actually, this is a relatively comfortable game for them. Uh, in games in which they've achieved lead with Helios' shot calling, they've been able to win. So, pretty inactive early game, TSM yeah. slowly ahead, but definitely not by a, by too big of a margin that would negate a nice play by Dignitas turning the tides. Taking a turret down quickly in the mid. Looking at Dig's composition, if, or I'm sorry, looking at TSM's composition, what are their priority targets going in a fight on Dig? Because it looks like TSM's would be the first one to get that initiation. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with how uh, tanky Dyrus can get early on because if they can lock down either Shifter or Core JJ, uh, even just for a second, that allows Bjergsen to land his AoE and that can probably burst them down. Uh, mainly, I'm interested to see how quickly Dyrus gets home guards if TSM does want to force, because a lot of it will be about Bjergsen trying to poke, 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 uh, especially once he gets level 16 for the increased range, and then they'd want to go in for some type of flank teleport play. Uh, since Core JJ on Jinx, it's going to be hard for him to maximize DPS and team fights with the artillery shots coming down so frequently from yeah. Kog'Maw. And 
just look at that. This is absolutely crazy. Complete ownership of the jungle in the second that TSM steps into the lane as well. They're able to dish out tons of damage. If yeah. you will. And if you can imagine a late game scenario where Dyrus has home guards, that's when the teleport would go down on a ward in the jungle and he would flank it behind the turret. Yep. And then TSM would go for a dive. They might just get the turret outright here. This next wave coming up. Actually, turret. Dyrus has good pressure on that turret in the top lane. Made as well keep it, but he has cut into the jungle now, actually, to make it look like he is focusing on this bot lane play. Not going to stay for now. Just setting up a word for himself. It seems they're clearing it out, and he will focus on the top turret. So TSM playing this one slow. Make it take the toss meet, uh, march to the beat of their drum. Giving up that pressure, though, when he moves off. Yeah. Interesting. I think there's definitely something that TSM could have done with that. Maybe get ready for Dragon. That's in 50 seconds. Then we'll let that game go to the wayside either. Uh, two is not fit. Could be the option. Yeah, well, with, with how slow they're going to be playing, I mean, five Dragons could very well be yeah. one of the ways this game ends. Uh, this this next Dragon will be very interesting because Team Nigatos was able to very easily control the last one just by threatening the teleport from Gamsu. Yeah. Yorkson ended up getting zoned off. No one really prepped super strong wards. There's some nice, actually, so TSM has some nice deep wards in the jungle, which would prep well for this fight. That's something Dig has to consider as well. TSM spent a lot of time on that side of the jungle. At least do a quick brush walkthrough for picks, because yeah. that deep one behind red, very pitiful to have all game, or at least for the time being. Going down towards the dragon side, all these wards that you were just talking about set up are going to give nice security to TSM. They're patching that one in the death rush, though, easily cleared out with the Raptor buff. Now, before TSM starts dragging, it would be important to use this blue buff of Bjergsen to Get poke, poke them yeah. off. Free damage, really. We're I mean, not free. You're using mana, but why not? Untradeable. It's untradeable. I like it. Safe word. Or JJ pushing up with the team here. They're trying to dictate mid lane. I think TSM's gonna have to answer, but they still have the chance to sideswipe this fight. Coming in slowly is Dyrus. He's walking over ward right now, so that's a great rush ward that they keep from going down in that fight. All 10 summoner spells up right now. Okay. Cool. Nice Void Ooze completely blocking the line off for an entry. We're set up for a very explosive fight. Yeah, this is going to be go big once that fuse is lit. Yeah, however, the initiation potential of the teams, a lot of it's in TSM's hands. And less Kiwi can land a hook on a it, priority it just target. change positions. But the distance in which Wild Turtle and Bjergsen should be shooting from, they shouldn't be in range of a hook. So it's really on TSM to try and force a fight. Yeah, I like what TSM has done here. There we themselves go. Themselves around. Kiwi King gets blasted out instantly. Like you said, Jad, that one target completely displaced and followed up on by the carries. Taken out, and it looks like they have a good attempt here to force Dragon and force Dignitas into something they don't want. Dyrus, Vengeful Maelstrom is on, and that's going to be enough to stop the pursuit of Dragon for Team Dignitas. Gamsu on the other side. Can they get anything in? They cannot. Still try, though. Why not? So TSM very nicely dancing themselves from being goal side to dragon around to mid lane and then pushing dig down to their own jungle yeah and santorin using the flash body slam flash through the hook by the way Got him. Uh, very important that he flashed at that exact moment or his initiation actually could have been turned around yeah that fraction of a second i think he was going for the flash initiate anyway uh, i'll give him the benefit of the doubt santorin's <laughs> a god beautiful timing flashing over the death sentence. Got him. Got him. best flash body slam i've ever seen hit him but never expect it. Yeah. Definitely a slow methodical game. The guy running yeah. down the road just flashes you. It's surprising. 24 on the clock and a bit of a gold lead now for TSM. 2,000 gold is something they can actually start to snowball very big with the way that they play the game. But right now being slow about most of the things they're doing, I feel like Dignitas is going to have a chance to just get that gold back and put this back to completely even. Shifter pretty far up here, but he is staying safe with Helios on his right side, giving him that coverage. Yeah. 750. That tier is stacked, but it is not switched over without the change into the man immune. Yeah, I almost wonder if Bjergsen just going to go to finish his Leandris first. Huh? Just to get even more single shot poke damage. Really? Oh, 
all we got to analyze here because TSM is taking their time with this one. Two kills, 24 minutes. It's a bit slower than the other games we've had today. Just a bit. <laughs> but still decisive. It seems like both teams know what they want to do, especially with five pink wards on the map. One, two, three, four, five. One was just actually yeah. cleared out, so they're going to have to put another one down. But Dig is looking to get themselves back in here after that bit of a hit. Yeah, it feels like they're hoping, they're waiting for TSM to overcommit or make a mistake mm -hmm. uh, because it doesn't really feel like Team Vigatas has the uh, the better scaling team uh, definitively or the better way of initiating fights. So a slow style like this is actually against a lot of their win condition. But uh, with that being said, Team Vigatas has been one of the best teams at punishing opponent misplays. So it's, it's kind of playing out the way you yeah. expect. TSM, one of the more passive teams in North America. That's a good point. You should get some crazy play from Kiwi Kid. Grab somebody out you're not expecting. We saw it earlier, almost a flash lantern play, but not getting that one. Missed one of those yesterday. But still able to come up with a victory, so. Giving those attempts out doesn't mean it's not going to work one of the times. Double, or yeah, double it. <laughs> Rather wild turtle, alone by himself for a second, but joins with the team back in the mid lane. We'll see what they can do here to make themselves more useful. That Storm Shield is going on to the right targets. We've seen a lot of Janna play lately affecting these fights. More and more supports pick her up. Or using her, I should say. They've already picked her up. Mm -hmm. Coming back into play. So yeah. much hard initiation had been played over the past few weeks. Uh, Righteous Glory nerfs coming in this patch. Disengage. Working out. Kite comps making a slight comeback again. But it's all very minor in the tweaks. Change takes time. Where we're seeing those Janas, we're also seeing that Gragas team yeah. put that composition together. So nice. Stack the displays together. Yeah. That caused chaos. A lot of teams cannot get themselves under control once that happens in the fight. So far, TSM has only been able to get to a fight twice here. Now pressuring fight number three would be wow. Baron. Yeah. 26 I mean, and a half minutes. Honestly, this has been prepped a couple minutes ago. They know the scrying over is down. Sure. They have the vision control of the area. It's actually a really smart call to go for right now. Jinx Rocket scouts, and they get the Baron. And oh, a kill. That's a fast Whoa. and a thrash. Unfortunate by Kiwi Kid to go down instantly in that one. A few crits hit him in the right spot, along with that living artillery. And now TSM slowly, like, I feel like Dignitas gave them way too much room here. Going even in the game is okay, but when you're behind, you have to know exactly where the opposing team is. Well, it's an unfortunate thing. They don't have the ability to no. create the team fights unless Kiwi Kid makes a huge play or Helios expends his flash to get an unburrow. Yeah. That's about it. Uh, but with all that, they'd still be the John and the Grog to disengage. Yep. So it's. That's true. That's true. TSM is playing this smart. They, the only thing that they would want to have approved on is to achieve the third dragon. Right, not giving away that one dragon in the mid game, but outside of that, they're playing directly to their win conditions, and it's quite clean, no deaths. Across the map, that was just Baron. Baron all the way down bot lane to drop a second tier turret. Now they're gonna come out of the base. It's actually a Rylai's Crystal Scepter before that Leandris as well, so he is still just not finishing that tier. It's just a big mana pool for him right now to keep putting out damage. And wait for that level 16. That'll be the big one, mm -hmm. because Right now, the cooldown on his Living Artillery is 1.44 seconds. Uh, the Rylai's Crystal Scepter slow is 40% for one second. It is going to be tremendously powerful when he starts raining down terror with this build. And Team Dignitas has let it happen. He's let the AP Cog power up. Goes out, just misses Howling Gale, kind of stops to disengage anyways if they wanted to get back into the fight. Baron minions take a little bit longer to take down. Of course, JJ can't get to that line and start hitting them off. You can see not a lot of damage done by Shifter's laser coming out of Victor there. Bjergsen here to stay on the line. The team goes to rotate to mid lane. This is when they can start spreading Dignitas thin and not even seeing very many home guards on their side. Not even one yet. Yeah, they're a little bit denied on gold right now, honestly. Uh, with the Baron control and all the jungle wards from TSM, they haven't been able to farm much. This is exactly what TSM wanted to happen once they turn on. You poke them off with the Kog'Maw, yep. you take your small windows with the Trist and chunk down the turrets, and they're doing just that. Side to side, drawing them away, getting more turret damage. A few more hits on this one. Turtle's actually hitting Helios over the wall, so they didn't get an explosive charge on the turret just yet, but a 
whole heck of a lot of wards over that wall, keeping them safe. Dyrus solo and out the in him turret on the bot side of the map. Nobody can really mess with him because he's not going to go down fast enough. TSM's going to kill the entire rest of your team by the time you get Dyrus even down to 10% HP. Kiwi Kid, the flash, and the box goes up. The hook can't follow. Too many minions in the way, so they've got to get themselves around a kill onto Santorin. May do a bit here, but they turn it right around to Gamsu. This fight not looking good as Dyrus TP to the top lane to make this fight happen. The hook to Turtle stops him from adding the DPS in, but they have the targets they want, and it's not looking good for Dig. Oh! Hey! Turtle on the flash! Hey, that's why you don't flash in. That's why you don't flash in. Flashing away at the last flash second. to live. Beautiful reaction time from Turtle, as we've seen in the past, taking advantage of his quick fingers. Summoner spells coming out at the right time. So in that case, I'm okay with telling him not to flash in. He can flash out afterwards. Although maybe he just would have killed him if he flashed in, so who knows. And he would have died there if that was rocket jump. It would have channeled, he would have gotten hit by the rocket. So flash was up. Like this again. Is, I mean, Team Niggertaz knew they were getting start from turret, so finally Kiwi Kid flashes in to try and make a play. They do catch that Torn because they're heavily in disengage mode until Dyrus arrives. Uh, but then they still have a lot of crazy damage with the Cogmaw and the Trist. Rocket jumps in to a hook with a wild turtle, but then pretty safe damage. Heal. Look at that. Woo! That was good. Very close. That was close. Dragon contest on. Wild turtle actually taking red buff. He needs to get down there ASAP. I feel like the poke from Bjergsen though will be sufficient for them to stay. Yeah, threat. All right. A little Dargon damage over to Lust Boy. He should be okay. Take some. Pretty good hits there, but his shield more deceiving than you think. Most likely will keep him alive in this next fight. Kiwi Kid throwing out the hooks. At least wants to get a bit of pressure. Get one of those hooks to land and see if you can take it. Doesn't look like he wants to take 100% of these, but look for the option still. 8,000 gold lead now for Team Solo mid. They're using this power to absolutely shred through the members of Dignitas. Kiwi Kid hasn't Zapling. really been able to attack nope. so close. But he gets taken down by the Living Artillery before it comes in. And that's just the story now of TSM's lead. You are getting whittled down before the fight even starts. Yep, and then the turret goes down. And oh, it's Helios going in hard. Helios tries to make plays, but he's instantly picked off, instantly peeled off. The same with Shifter in the mid lane. A much different game for Dignitas than yesterday, as TSM was able to take an early lead and control it. Now they start to tighten that stranglehold on this game. Yeah, there's no inhibitor turrets up, so TSM's gonna take three inhibitors right now. Should still have enough to clear this. I thought initially it would be hard for TSM to get to these turrets, to clear past shifters, laser, get past the waves, but when you're this far ahead, you don't even worry about the turrets. Yeah, their team comp has turned on to yeah. a very powerful point. Oh! Didn't even need you to Killed try to it. block it. Nope, he's good. Flash in, man. Nice Come try. On. Oh! Turtle's good. Howling Gale for the save. Gets himself out nicely. Walking through the minions to make sure nobody no. could really follow in the end. And TSM are out with all three in hips down. Yeah, this is this has actually been a very controlled game by Team Solomon. A lot of people uh, can criticize their passive play style, and it can be exploited, but this is the way TSM wins controlled matches. Uh, they picked a late game team composition. They stayed even, they never fell behind, and then they played around objectives very well. They got Baron, finished off the Dragon, has given them enough poke opportunities now with three inhibitors down, as well as a level 16. Kogma with Leandris completed. Time for TSM to close. Turtle, go by. Turtle has 2k gold right now. I don't know yeah, if they the, need to spend it. He doesn't need to spend it, the team <laughs> can go in. This gets such an itch when I see that much money. Go spend it. I mean, oh, with, no. With what Rylai's Kogma is doing to Kiwi Kid right now. Didn't we just see oh, this? Look at the jukes. Kiwi Kid! Oh, it's so dear lord, it's so close. Kiwi Kid, run! Moby Boots, I they're think kicking he's got in. it. Nobody's yeah. gonna get it. He's safe. Got him. That, what was, that was a half-assed throw on that side. All right, Kiwi Kid gets out alive. Turtle hops over the wall, and we're safe for this time. Fool Kiwi Kid once. He'll figure it out the second time. 34 Ooh. minutes on the clock. TSM obviously going to force this. They have no worry about it. Even Bjergsen, low mana. They're good enough to go. Good block by Turtle. Yeah, Rylai's the Andres, level 16. Kog'Maw. That's a good sting right there. Oh my goodness, it is. 
It is just absurdly powerful. The back and attack now from Team Solo Mid. They're gonna get all the rest of the items they need. Let's see what 2,000 plus gold does here for Wild Turtle. Just back already. Nobody needs to do Raptors right now. Dignitas trying to stop <laughs> all the minions going into their base. This is going to be tough. They don't have very much to get a lot of AoE down. Now finally Core JJ up with the rockets. They're going to be able to slice everything down to size. And here comes Team Solo Mid down the mid lane though. Dignitas on the last attempt to save the base. What's really crazy in this game is against so much poke that there's not a single copy of Home Guard Boots on Team Dignitas. It's one of the core items you build against yeah. uh, a heavy poke team composition. Either way, they're down three inhibitors. Home Guards won't save them now. This, These minions, they're going to do it. Yeah, everybody elixired up here, coming in on the side of Team Solo mid. It looks like Iron Elixir's almost across the board, except for Bjergsen. Helios tries to get into the middle of the fight, but he's instantly taken down and cooked up. Gore JJ takes another shot, the flash in. Oh, Dyrus on the fountain, live from the laser. A double kill for Turtle as they end the fight. As they get on the Nexus, they charge the fountain. 10 to one as TSM takes down Team Dignitas. Yeah, and even though it felt slow and methodical, any of the game at 35 minutes is actually yeah. above average shorter games than TSM normally plays. So that just kind of speaks to the cleanness of the way they close that victory. Bjergsen with the AP Kog'Maw pick. Really ridiculous poke he did throughout the game. While Turtle stayed safe that entire game despite numerous gank attempts, five, zero, and four, and did that turret killing job. Really just a nice way for TSM to break their four game losing streak. You wouldn't think that was a team on a four game losing streak watching them play. Not at all, especially a team that has to go up against Dignitas who beat the number one gravity yesterday to kind of hit their win record. So a lot of momentum Dig had coming into this game, instantly thwarted by Team Solo Mid. Again, that Gragas we were saying for the last five games for Santorin in the jungle, starting to definitely prove good things from that position. Absolutely. I mean, Bjergsen is well able to go back to the Kog'Maw for a game like this and just, it's kind of a whatever, obviously still playing it across the board, solo queue and whatnot, but on the stage is always a different story. And he showed up once again on a different champion. Yeah, and it was, we said it a lot during the game, but it was back to basics for Team Solo. Right. Dyrus on a tank, Santorin on Gragas, one of his best jungle champions from the spring, and then Bjergsen on a hyper carry of some kind. Even though it wasn't an assassin, it was definitely a hyper carry. Lost Boy on a disengaged support as well, one of the defensive options that he became known for back in the day. Yeah. And that's that's a tough type of game to lose if your team didn't toss. He would just jump back with a huge win against the number one team in the LCS in gravity and was hoping to make a big run. Uh, now that keeps them yeah. at nine wins. Of the top six teams, you're the only one still sitting at nine. Everyone else is at 10 or 11. And that, that race continues. That 10 and six for Team Solo Mid now means they do not lose five games in a row, which would have been their longest ever for the North American LCS. Yeah. So they stopped that bleeding, much needed for them as well. A lot of things have been happening behind the scenes with Team Solo Mid, so I'm sure the fans are happy to see this victory here after all that. Yeah, fairly dejected key we could have for that one. A lot of responsibility was on his shoulders during that game because it was a very poke late game turn on team composition. Yeah. You can and see him trying to make the hook plays. Yeah. At least, even as I said, he may not want to take the hook, but they're looking for grabs everywhere. And they ended up drafting a team that could not withstand the poke, match the poke, or initiate on it, uh, which didn't leave him very many options. Kiwi Kid would have had to be insanely good that game to pull out a victory. Yeah. Also, with the pressure in the mid lane, Bjergsen able to get up on the Kogma on uh, Shifter's Victor. Not something you see all the time. Usually we'll see Victor pushing in, being able to get places. But Bjergsen just charging the Mana yeah. Crystal, charging that tier, never built it into anything. Yeah. Which you'd think was just that plateau that mid laners hit, but honestly, the blasting one after. If he would have been getting engaged on, maybe he completes his Seraph so he can get the active shield. But outside of that, yeah. the Rylai's Leandries for the slow and the extra damage was clearly the right choice. So big. Kiwi yeah. Kid was not having fun with those. And we're right now going to send it over to Dash at the Analyst Desk.